Oh my gosh, here we go again. I've got a double cocoon. I'll post a link to my first double cocoon video. Uh, many of you commented, did you follow along to see what emerged? No, I didn't that first time. So in this video, I'm gonna follow along and we're gonna watch to see what comes out of this double cocoon. You can see that those two cocoons are joined at the hip and I am isolated them in this uh, little bit of vermicompost. Let's follow along and see how many wisps. And so this is gonna be a time series video so you can see what happens and how many wisps come out of that giant double cocoon. Okay, it's been 10 days. So let's take a look at our double cocoon and see if we have found any wisps yet. There's our double cocoon. It is still intact. One, one end seems to be larger. Let me just hold this up again. One end does seem to have like an air bubble in it. And remember that what from my little cocoon video, air bubbles mean at least one wisp has emerged. I am not going to easily be able to see a wisp in here because the material is a bit muddy, as you can tell. I've been keeping the humidity up to make sure that the conditions are good for cocoon hatching. Oh, oh, and there's our wisp. I was gonna say, imagine a wisp will be down the bottom. So I am right. It's not a wisp. Look at the size of that after 10 days. So this answers one of our questions. These, This is a cocoon from my Vancouver Island worms because there's no way a red wiggler wisp would look this size. Here, let me put him on some egg carton here. That a, a red wiggler uh, wisp would look that size after just uh, after just ten days. So, oh, and that's a little springtail that's moving there. So we'll wait for the wisp to move and then you can see how big he is while I go looking for any brothers or sisters. So there you go, that air bubble that I saw in the cocoon is the sign, it's another springtail, is a sign that a wisp had emerged and I found him. So I'm just looking to see whether that is all we're going to get and that that double cocoon in that it looks a little bit uh, disheveled, a little bit crimped. Uh, does that mean that, you know, even though it's a double, it's only going to have a single occupant? I guess I'm relieved that this is one of my Vancouver Island worms because the... Uh, wisps are larger. They will be easier to see. There he goes. So that's a ten, well, a maximum 10 day old wisp of the Ar Arteostrotus vancouverensis worms. This is the same worm that was starring in my worm cocoon video uh, showing the worms hatching. A link to that as well as my previous double cocoon video. This wisp, uh, contrary to the wisp in my hatching video, you can actually see that his intestine has vermicast in it already. Do you see the blacks? Um, material moving through his gut so this wisp has already started to ingest so we know that he's bigger than a newborn uh, but he is nevertheless much larger than a red wiggler uh, uh, wisp all right so 
Is that the only wisp we're going to get out of that double cocoon? I don't know. Previously frozen banana makes the perfect food for wisps because it's nice and moist and mushy and will fit in their little mouths. So I'm going to push it down next to the egg carton where we found that little wisp. I'm just going to cover it with some additional egg carton. Keep it nice and moist and top it up with that tissue that is suitably inoculated with the juices from the fork as well as the container that I put those egg cartons in temporarily. All right, I'll see you in a few seconds at our next check-in. Hi everyone, it's been 19 days, so let's see if that double cocoon is still intact and if the worm that we found last time has any siblings. So I'm just down to the last piece of moist egg carton here. I've been examining each of them to make sure there were no wisps on them. And right away, I can see the double cocoon. So let me uh, take that out of there. That's also in the region where the banana was. So I was hoping we would see our little friend, but let me dig that out and we'll see what happens. So here's the double cocoon. I rinsed it off and you can see that part of the cocoon has definitely opened. The other half of the cocoon still seems to be bulbous, spherical in shape. So I don't know what that means. There's still worms gonna come out of that round end and only the one end has opened. But let's go take a look and see if we can find our friend. And like I said, if he has any uh, other worms that have joined him. Okay, so I have this really soft silicon spatula that I thought I could use to turn over the material as we go on a wisp hunt. I probably, look at it, I've left it too long to find wisps in the banana. Is that... Nope, no movement there. Looks like the banana is gone. It was right in the center here. Let's see if we can find our little friend. Oh, there's maybe some of the banana peel. Oh, is that? there he is. There's our one worm. There he is. He's getting bigger. So there he is on the silicon spatula, looking just fine, so looking bigger. So I'll put him safely over in the other egg carton, so he's safe. Now let's take a look at if he has any friends. So I put on my rechargeable forehead light to really illuminate the vermicompost so that I could find these wisps easier. Uh, if you don't have one of these rechargeable forehead lights, I urge you to look into them. I'll put my Amazon affiliate link that, for the one that I purchased. It actually came in a pack of two, and they're rechargeable. So I just alternate when the battery gets low in one. They really illuminate the little moist bodies of either wisps or worms if you're trying to pull them out of vermicompost. There's one. There's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. Here's number six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six six wisps coming out of this now deformed double cocoon. This is the worm Arcturostrotus vancouverensis. I think this is the only video documenting how many wisps might be possible. That little guy's not happy. That's behavior of worms that aren't happy um, that come out of, in this case, a double cocoon. So I've given the container a little bit of previously frozen mushy pear and a little dusting of eggshell grit. In goes the soaking wet egg carton, complete with the worms and their cocoon huddled up in there. 
So these worms are now going to live in this little container and I'll check back in a week or two and see if any brothers or sisters joined the party. But I think we're just gonna watch this group of six grow up. All right, bye for now.